Yeah, I'd like to start off and thank Dave Hart for everything that uh, he's done for the University of Tennessee and Tennessee football and Butch Jones as well. And, uh, you know, everything is about leaving a place better than the way it was when you came here. And I, I can tell you this, I think I speak for everyone. I think I speak for every single coach Dave Hart has made Tennessee athletics uh, much, much better because he was a leader. When you look at our academics, you look at our entire structure, you look at the morale uh, inside the building, uh, you look at all the progress, you look at the facilities, that's all his vision. And uh, so again, I'd like to say thank you to him. And, uh, in terms of football, uh, obviously coming off of an off day, start of school, I was very, very interested to see how our players would respond. Uh, I like the way they came out with energy. Uh, I like their effort early. But uh, way too many mistakes. We're not playing winning football right now. Too many balls on the ground. Uh, not playing to our style of play in terms of effort. Uh, the fundamentals, we talked about being a defense that hunts the ball and generates turnovers. I didn't see much of that today. Uh, and we have to get our scout teams. Uh, it's the first time we've really gone to scout teams and really didn't like their style of play. But that's why you practice. Uh, we'll get better. We'll be better for it. Uh, but I did like their approach to practice today. But you know, I want a clean practice. We got to start getting game ready now. The intensity, uh, everything has to pick up. Uh, it's basically game week for us in a mindset, and uh, we have to challenge our conditioning. Uh, and, and I think it's a wake up call for the younger players in our program. We always talk about there's four phases to football there's offense, there's defense, there's special teams, and there's the speed of life. And I think the speed of college life uh, caught up with them a little bit now. Of, having a full class load and having your student body on campus and the clutter and the distractions and being able to take care of your body, get your eight to nine hours of rest, hydration, full-time study hall at the Thornton Center, all that goes into it. So they're kind of going through a learning process right now. So I answer any questions you have. But you, you referenced not a clean practice. How much of that is some of the injuries that you have kind of mounting? You know, I, don't, I wouldn't say mounting in injuries. I think it's we're ahead of schedule right now injury-wise and where we've been. I think it's nagging camp injuries. The only significant injury right now is Chance Hall. Uh, Chance had uh, some arthroscopic surgery on his knee. Uh, he'll be out anywhere to four to six weeks. Uh, but we got great news on that. So, uh, you know, we look forward to getting him back. You know, a lot of things are just nagging injuries that you go through camp, but I think a lot of it too is our players learning how to take care of themselves. And they've done a good job to date, but it's a lot of the younger players. But I think that does challenge you a little bit. We've also held some players out just sure. for precautionary, you know, reasons uh, to make sure that they're fresh and, and all that. But I think it has a little bit, but you know, it's the next guy in, the standard, the expectations, our work capacity, that never changes no matter who's on the field. Which it's kind of a, a story that's been told many times by now, but you stayed in the hotel room with Dave Hart till I think 5.30 in the morning and accepting the Tennessee job. What what about your relationship was, was born that night and how much differently might have you, might have you viewed the Tennessee job had you been meeting with someone other than Dave Hart? Well, that, that was a long night and uh, you know, I had a great job. We had just won a championship, and I wasn't looking to leave. And But obviously, it's Tennessee, and it's a great tradition, great fan base, everything. But uh, that was a long night in Lexington, Kentucky. Uh, but Dave Hart sold me on a vision, uh, you know, and he's, he's given us everything that we've needed to be successful here. He understands, you know, what it is to be a coach. Uh, so he's meant a lot, and it's not just football. If you talk to Rick Barnes, if you talk to Holly, if you talk to anyone, he's very, very supportive. As we all know, he's extremely competitive. He thinks like a coach, uh, and that's been very, very helpful in turning this football program around. Had you met him before that, the first I had not. What did you know about him going in? Uh, I tried to do my research right away, and what I knew is he had a tremendous reputation of building programs. Uh, when you look at the success that he had, whether it was East Carolina or Florida State. Uh, so I know everyone spoke very highly of him, of the individuals that I spoke with. Which I, you've been pretty supportive of him and the job that he's done throughout his tenure. Are you disappointed at all that, that he's going to be stepping down? Well, that's life. And, uh, you know, things, sudden change and things happen all the time. And that's a decision that him and Pam made. And, you know, we're going to respect that decision and move forward. And, you know, I know that uh, he's looking forward to the next phase of his life, but he has unfinished business here. And, 
you know what, our administration will go out and they'll, they'll get a great person uh, in that role. It's obviously a, a great job, but it's also a demanding and challenging job as well. Butch, I know you guys have settled the Title IX lawsuit, but you've made it clear there's still ongoing education and still a commitment to, to cleaning that component up. Um, but I wonder how much does it impact you when you think you're getting now to just focus on the football season and you've got the distraction looming over your head, potential distraction looming over your head of the guy who hired you being on his way out the door? I don't look at it, John, as a distraction. I think of it as, as an opportunity. Uh, you know, so it's not a distraction. That's a decision that Dave made best for him and his family. And, we support that decision, but I'm very confident that you know we'll find a great person uh, who can lead us, and uh, I'm looking forward to working hand in hand with that person. But I can't say enough about Dave and everything that he's done. But you know that's life, and so I don't look at that as a distraction at all. Uh, I look every, I try to look at those things as opportunities to grow and get better. Yeah, uh, Alexis Johnson was out here a little bit today conditioning. Uh, he'll continue to have to work his way back into our football program and on our team. Uh, there's been no timetable set. Uh, he understands uh, the requirements that have been laid out in front of him, things that he has to accomplish. Uh, he did very well in the classroom last semester, uh, but it's a day-by-day -day process. What are you going to help with the man when this privilege come out? Well, you know, again, situational football. Uh, how can we handle uh, situational football, being able to be able to communicate with no coaches on the field. Uh, you know, I didn't think we communicated very well today. I don't know if that was a byproduct of school and a day off, uh, but again, you know, most missed assignments are lost leverage on the football, lack of communication, uh, missed tackles. And again, we have to do a much better job of communication, but I think what I'm looking forward to is consistency, focus, and execution, and all 11 individuals playing as one. And we haven't had that where we've had all 11 yet play for an extended series. And that's something that everyone has to take responsibility for and, and execute and do their job. Well, what are some of the players you're looking at on the offensive line? You said you wanted to go seven or eight deep. Are there some guys that are emerging as candidates for that rotation? The great thing is, is we have competition there. Uh, and everybody's pushing everyone. And you know, we look forward to getting a chance back. But it's also an opportunity for some individuals to step up. And there's individuals that, uh, you know, have worked hard and now it's time they have an op opportunity and now go make the best of it. And, you know, it's it's from Benzel Bowen. Uh, Drew Richmond's been doing a very good job. Obviously, Brett Kendrick's been very, very steady. Uh, but there's a, there's a youngster, too, who's starting to do very well, and that's Marcus Tate. Uh, he's an individual who continues to gain the weight necessary. Uh, he has very, very good weight. Uh, and been very, very impressed with him. All these youngsters are doing a very, very good job. They knee house all of them. So, you know, I see that group collectively getting better. And, uh, you know, we need that because, like I said, we're looking to play seven or eight individuals and go as deep as we possibly can. Butch on Alexis Johnson. Brandon, a lot, a lot of people in the, in the offensive line, there's a lot of different positions. Coleman Thomas has played a lot of places. Will you look at him just to, for security purposes with some reps at right tackle? Or, or how do you manage him because he does have experience at that position? Well, we will a little bit, and you know, it, it's very beneficial for us that Coleman has played tackle in the past. Uh, so we've moved individuals around, and you can never have enough guys who play center. Uh, I want to say our first year we played in a bowl game, and both of our centers went down, and it's the most uh, uncomfortable feeling on the sideline when you're worried about who's snapping the football. So again, we, we've worked a lot of individuals in there. Uh, Coleman uh, is our center, but we will move him around a little bit. Butch, I saw Bullware get some snaps at that center today, and then yeah. following up on Alexis, what must he do to fully rejoin the team? What's a reasonable? Well, that, that's between Alexis and myself and our administration and our football program. But the, the expectations with him and his family, and they've been great. Uh, they understand. They understand the expectations of what is expected here. He was really only a couple weeks in our program, so we have to get to know him. Um, and he'll have to, he'll be required uh, with all the fourth and one sessions and individual sessions that our players went through uh, this summer. But again, those expectations are laid out in front of him. They understand that. Uh, again, it just gets back to playing a lot of players at center. Uh, so, you know, next man in, no matter who it is. And, you know, we have individuals, again, that, uh, you know, afforded us the luxury of, of 
the versatility of moving players around. The first just overall, what's been your impressions of the way Jalen and Alvin just their approach this offseason from training camp, how they've come into this season after what they did last year? I've liked their approach. Uh, you know, but now it's getting game time. And, you know, we got to work on challenging their conditioning, finishing runs. Uh, you know, the mark of a great back is can you do it over and over and over and over again. You, know, you look at the Outback Bowl, I believe we ran Jalen nine times in a row in that heat uh, for a touchdown. And so, again, I, not just them, but everyone has to challenge their conditioning and their mindset. And that's one of the hardest things because to these individuals, game time's a long time away. For us as coaches, it's right around the corner. And so, again, it's, it's finishing runs. It's sprinting back, getting the next rep, all that, making sure you're taking game live reps. But just two weeks left until the season start, do you feel like you've been able to whittle down what you want to do at defensive line and in the defensive backfield in terms of short uh, rotation? I think there's still ongoing competition. Uh, we have some individuals that are really stepping up and emerging uh, and you know, providing stability there, providing competition. Uh, but again, there's no timetable. We want to play as many individuals as possible. Uh, but I like what I've seen there so far. But Coach, in terms of just a purely on the field or purely strength and conditioning standpoint, have y'all got an idea of where Alexis is in terms of has he stayed in shape? Has he done those things? I'll know a little bit more later today. This is the first day I've seen him. And, uh, you know, I can tell you he probably has a lot of work to do, but that's understandable. But that's why we're going to take it day by day and not put any timetables on anything. And just the whole process is going to be looked at it one day at a time. And also, hey, Coach, Andrew, do you have anything to add? No. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, <Andrew. laughs>